Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, I got Joy O'Connor and Dennis Dick with me this morning as per usual. Um, I thought today was going to be a day dominated by Fed talk. Uh, we know what they're going to do, but how will the market react? Um, that is still in focus for sure. But we have to talk about China because what happened overnight, uh, it, frankly, is unprecedented, at least since, since I've been here. Um, f- someone find me a stock this morning that is not from China that is trading higher. There's like three that like among the top gainers, there's like three of the top 50 are non-Chinese stocks. The rest of them are all from China. Every single Chinese stock is trading higher uh, by a lot this morning, frankly. Uh, And we'll get to why here in a few moments. So uh, strap in, smash the like button. Uh, Here we go. It's going to be a day, that's for sure. Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. With your host, Joel O'Connor. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been the penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. All right, let's bring Joel on here, and we'll get Joel's charts on. Joel, good morning. And um, everything is up except for a couple things. <laughs> well, uh, a two-day move. We haven't had a strong back-to-back up days in a while. We'll see if uh, Pump and Pile can keep it going. Uh, we're up 58 and a quarter handles, 43.12, right right near the highs of the pre-market session, right back at Friday's high or within 12, 14 points. So keep an eye on 43, 26, 75. And after that, I have nothing on, to like 43, 66. That doesn't mean we're not going to zig and zag, but that's, that's where it is. We're up in a Fed meeting. A lot of good stuff to talk about. Uh, crude, not much of a bounce after a really bad couple days, up 17 cents in 96.61. Gold continues to deteriorate, not as much, down four bucks in 1925.70. Silver in the red by six cents at 25,100. And Bitcoin, after a couple quiet days, just sneaking up back over 40K, up $940 at 40,700. Uh, triple D, or it's not Triple D, Ethereum <laughs> is up. Thirty-five dollars at twenty-six ninety-five. Let's bring in Triple D wow. here. There's a lot to talk, but I want to start with just a real quick educational segment here. Okay, yes. Yes. and it's it, it's going to be related to today's trading. It's very important <laughs> to have rules. Okay, but my new rule is sometimes you just got to break all the rules. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Because that, that's the only way you would have caught the buy. And I yeah. looked at it. I looked at the way uh, JD popped yesterday. Baba had a nice pop yesterday. Yeah. Uh, they did pull back. You, and could, I'm you could feel a turn. And, I, and I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, okay. So I go ahead and buy it. And then it's down 10 bucks. And Triple D's yelling at me. Like, how could you do that? There's no way. You that's know, what would have been the repercussions of that. Buy, buy, buy strong stocks in, in, in yeah. you know, when they sell off and, uh, and then bam, and then you just you just had that that queasy feeling. And I look, and I'm like, oh my god, it's at 92 bucks. Well, what do you do now? Wow, well, let's just rewind the tape. So <laughs> they were massively oversold, and everybody wants to talk about capitulation in the U.S. markets, and we have not even seen anything like capitulation in the U.S. markets. So then we brought the conversation yesterday over to you want to see capitulation? I said. Look at the Chinese stocks. I'm like, they are massively oversold. Um, And I said specifically on the show yesterday, I'm like, one of these days, you're going to walk in and then see Alibaba up 20%. And lo and behold, it's the next day. I bought zero Alibaba. Wish I would have. Wish I would have got long. But because I have rules and I'm not trying to be a hero and call the bottom. Even though I, I said it on the show that one of these days, I didn't mean the next you know, what, day. What day? What day? No, 
No, and people give me credit. I'm all people who up. Great call on Bob yesterday. Well, I'm just you know throwing it out there. One of these days, it could have went down another ten points before rallying twenty percent. So it's a risky, risky play trying to call the bottom and stuff. So despite you know me saying it yesterday, I didn't buy any. Guy Dami did call it last night yeah. though on Ali Bob, and he actually kickstarted it as he said. He thought this thing could have a rip your face off rally too. And it was too when stocks are this oversold. I mean, China in itself, let's just take you to what capitulation looks like. It looks like this on a chart, yep. but it's when every analyst on CNBC comes on and they uh, say, is China investable? And they're like, not right now. When every <laughs> analyst is saying it's uninvestable, you got to that's your sign that it's probably investable <laughs> at this point in time. <laughs> Everybody was spooked to buy anything China. It was going to be the next Russia. It was going to be delisting all these companies. And this is all still on the table, but way, way, way overdone. So Now, so- I will say, if you were coming in today, this morning, after a 21% rally in Alibaba overnight, and You're saying, doing it wrong. I've got to buy Alibaba today, I'm going to say, where were you yesterday? <laughs> because today... The smart money is probably selling. 100 will be a brick wall, I think, on Alibaba. You're eight bucks away from there. There's room to 100. If I was logging it, I'd almost probably throw out my order like 98, 99 right now because you never know. We might just go to Silly Town and you might get done. And that's just a kick your ass 30% or in one day. Uh, but I'm absolutely not coming in today and buying. Right. I say I don't buy rips. This is the rip of all rips, Spencer. I believe they're saying this is the biggest rally in Chinese stocks since the financial crisis. Uh, for the, the Hang Seng Index uh, since October 08. Uh, there you go. What happened in October uh, 08? Well, the end of the world was happening. We had everything collapse, like a financial market collapse. We had wicked, wicked rallies back then where it's the same thing. Just selling, 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 people predicting the end. And then there's the rip your face off short squeezes happening. I'll tell you what happened after March. When, when, when was that? When was that? October 08? October of 2008. And I can remember October 2008 well. It was capitulation. You could feel capitulation in all these stocks back then. I remember this, Joel. Do you remember this, the preferred stocks? Oh, yeah. There was. I used to trade a lot of preferred stocks, and I'd arm them against each other. And there was this one morning, and I can't remember, um, you know, what which exact day it was, but it was like maybe like right around there, October we'll say of two thousand eight, and a lot of these preferred stocks trade twenty five dollar par. They had been leaking and leaking because we were worried about you know the banks failing. We had already yeah. seen we um, had you know, some- Lehman Brothers go down. We had already seen Barclay or uh, we already seen Bear Stearns get bailed out. I mean, everybody's thinking every bank might go down here. So the Citigroup preferreds had leaked from like twenty five to fifteen, yielding like now like ten twelve percent. That next morning, there was multiple preferreds that it took like six months for them to go 25, 15. That next morning, there was like five. multiple preferreds that opened at five bucks, like from 15 to five in one day. And I can remember I bought the one Citigroup preferred at five and I shorted the equivalent one at 12 on the open. And I'm like, I usually jump in that trade for like 20 cents. I just took seven bucks out of it. And that's capitulation. That's when everybody's like throwing in the towel. I'm like, holy mackerel. I'm like, I can't believe that thing opened at five. And I literally brought it up in my PL. I bought the open at five, five dollars. And it and I, by the time I brought it up, it was 10. It was literally in like literally two seconds, it went from five to ten. Because there's people who had shorted at 12 saying, I'll buy nine, take three points and ten. The algos were all over it. So that's capitulation when you just get like everybody throwing it all out. And Alibaba wasn't to that extreme, but it was pretty extreme. I mean, $120 10 sessions ago, basically cut in half almost in like 10, 12 sessions. Getting to be, you know, P9, everybody's worried about delisting. I'm worried about delisting too. So at a certain point in time, there's going to be a dead cat bounce. And that's what you're seeing here this morning. And what am I going to do with this? I just got done saying my portfolio yesterday. I said this on the show. I said, we're going to get this rip your face off rally. I'm going to lighten up my emerging markets funds into it. Because emerging markets, we were saying the EM has exposure of what? 25, 30% China. Yep. I'm like, I may lighten some EEM up into this today. We'll see. Like I've had that in there a long time. I still want some exposure to emerging markets. But at the same time... 
maybe I'm going to go direct. Maybe I'll just move it over a bit, like into, you know, maybe a fund over, you know, and get, get rid of the Chinese exposure, you know, a little bit further. But, you know, I'm, I'm still analyzing that. But you know what? I I'm going to take today, the opposite end. I'm going to take the opposite end of the coin on this. One. You're going to buy Alibaba today. No, no, no. <laughs> That's the opposite <laughs> end of the coin. He's going to buy. No, coins. no, no. What? Okay. I mean, maybe this is a turn. You know, there's there's turns in the market, right? There was the turn in the price yesterday. Who knows if the you know what the government's going to do? But instead, I I'm going to let this rally go. All right. Um, who knows how far it's going to go? It's a vet. You know, we're back over 90. I don't know if it's going to go to 100. But then there's there's going to be a pullback, right? You're still not going straight to 110, 120, 130, right? And if, you know, if you could get, you know, this is definitely some euphoria here. Let's say, what was low yesterday? I'm just throwing numbers out here. It was darn close to 70, 70 right? Something, yeah. 73. So let's say it goes to 103 on this move and it's a 30 point move. And then it, then it backs off and maybe I could get it, you know, in the upper 80s or yeah, lower 90s that. or something like that. I would do that. Uh, that That's what, you know, and, and pick a love. I would, you know, now it's hard to lean on the low of the move. Uh, but I mean, the other thing too, and if you would have looked at this during the day, look, and it's that, look at that candle. That's a green candle on a horrible day. And it, you know, and that, you know, wasn't a huge fan of the candlesticks, but I mean that that's telling you that overall, Nat Myers, it you was know, tried for the day yesterday during the day, it was try, it forced news? out again at the open, and it was trying to turn. We had a wicked rally at right the here, open. right here in the opening bar, yeah. And then you got the pullback, and that's what you when you strike, it when you see that wicked rally goes from seventy four to eighty dollars in like ten minutes, twenty minutes. And then it pulled all the way back and got back down to the 74 handle. That was when you should have struck yesterday. And, you know, I guess I should have bounced in some too. I don't know if I would have had the guts to hold it overnight though. Cause, cause overnight it seems like it's gapping down five bucks every day. <laughs> but I mean, it's just chasing, chasing is the way to lose money in 2022. And there is a lot of people buying it today. The stock is still trading higher. People are saying that the bottom is in. And you know what? I think the bottom might be in. I think the Alibaba bottom could very well be it. I mean, it's hindsight capital 2020. We're, we're significantly off that, that low. It's going right. to take some epically bad news for it to get back down there in any time soon. So everybody's going to be scrambling. All those money managers will be telling you today on CNBC how they bought Alibaba yesterday, despite all of them telling us yesterday that it was uninvestable. So CNBC will hunt down. Who's on Alibaba right now? They'll bring on all those analysts that bought it yesterday. And they're like, well, it was just too cheap. Of course I was buying Alibaba. And you know what? They were probably buying Baba yesterday, but they were probably buying it two days ago and five days ago and 10 days ago. And they're way down in the position, but they won't talk about those buys. They'll only talk about the buy yesterday because they're all disingenuous. So I'm going to say, I called it yesterday. I want to back up. I want to actually give, we haven't even given the news yet. Can I just say what the news is? Do the news. Yes. Okay. And then back in your own. And and Joel, I think Joel's point here is very valid, right? Because we talked about, what was it? It was a year ago, right? Where, okay, uh, the thesis here may have fundamentally changed. They're cracking down on big tech. There are concerns about delisting. Data the thesis fundamentally change in China, and that was last year. And I think it, it did. And Joel's question is, did it just change again? And I think it's a valid question. It may have. The thesis may have fundamentally just reversed sure. back to where it was. Because what happened overnight is the regulator, uh, Yi Gang, or Yi Gong, who's the governor of the, of the, the, the central bank over there, said that they're going to try and complete their crackdown on big tech as soon as possible. They support overseas listings. Don't worry. Everything is fine. Uh, Support our capital markets. Buy Chinese stocks. Everything is all good. That's basically what they said yesterday. It doesn't seem Um, like much. It didn't take much to get everybody spooked. And what's a short interest in this? I, I don't. I don't think it's not that much. Not, it's not that much. Got to be short Alibaba. Yeah, well, it's not. It's, all it's, these Chinese stocks nothing. weren't like, you know, nothing vicious Joel. short attacks here. These were just the fact that we don't know. And we didn't. And we don't know which side. You know, everybody spooked the scenario where China sides with Russia. And then we start sanctioning China. And we see what happened, you know, in Russia. So that's what everybody spooked about as yeah, well. Yeah, that. Yeah, all of that. that. There's a lot of ball still in the air. And a lot of those fears are not just gone all of a sudden because some Chinese official defends it. But 
I think the bottom, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and think, I think the Alibaba 52-week low might be in too. I mean, it's pretty easy to say. I don't just probably 25%. You know, it could get back down there and maybe, you know, there's going to be some times. But I think I would like Joel's strategy where we're not buying today at 93, but on the next spook, the next scare, maybe you take a shot in the low 80s. Maybe. You know, maybe, maybe you do. And maybe it just rips you off and keeps going and, you know, you miss it. But you know what? It's okay to miss the trade. It's not okay to buy the rip and then hold on to it and then become the bag holder. I miss trades all the time. I missed this trade. I, 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 no, I, I mean, and, I, Aaron Morris is at, is bringing up a great point. So we believe China now? No, no exactly. I don't, I don't think I believe. I don't think I believe it. it. I don't think I believe it. I, no, I, I don't know if I believe it either. <laughs> so that's why I'm definitely not buying stocks. Yeah, this is the opportunity to lighten up. If you've been overweight, all of these things. I mean, and and it's not just Alibaba. I mean, holy no, it's macro, everything. There's so many of these. Look at JD. Can I show you. Wait, I want to show you. JD yeah, was sure. strong yesterday. I want to show you. I, I want to show you. Thing was yeah, but now so it just strong. got. It just retraced fifty percent of the move in at in twenty four hours. I, I, I want to show you. This is the Benzinger Pro movers to have gainers on the left, losers on the right. This is just just for today's pre market. Holy crap. I, I, I want to show you. There are a hundred fields here for each column there's a hundred fields okay a hundred rows of yeah, stocks yeah i basically never get to the bottom because as you can see here the bottom is things that are barely there's no barely movement. green is, but no well, i'm on the right here right the, the bottom here is they're barely red so there's no point in me ever going to the bottom i actually had to count how many rows today because i've never actually been to the bottom before anyway scroll to the bottom of my gainers what's up the the, the low the bottom of this tool shows the stock up seven percent and if you just scroll here, with a couple of exceptions, it's mostly all Chinese stocks. Not all, because there's a couple other yeah. things like Starbucks is up, Biogen is up. There's a couple other things, but like these are all Chinese stocks. Like the top 50, and I think it's like 45 Chinese stocks. It is insane. Every single and then look at look at the size of the moves: 48%, 34%. 27, 20. These are oh. big moves. Part of that is because these are uh, low price stocks so mm -hmm. you know stock that's you know ten dollars goes up you know two bucks it's a it's a 20 percent move but um these are big moves and, and it's just with with uniformity across the board there is no chinese stock that is down today none what about uh is lucky kitchen still around oh TC that's a maybe. great great call out joel uh, it is still around. Yeah, I'm gonna see it moving though because it's OTC. They don't have pre market OTC. Right. Okay. I I'm trying to guess the ticker. It's too uh, many letters. Once yeah. they delist, I don't trade them anymore. Yeah, this is I the know. problem with yeah. delisting. You got it. You know, it's not so much that the company doesn't exist anymore and can't make money. It's that it, it, the, the it professionals is. aren't trading it, them anymore, so is. they don't move around as much. Wait a minute. I'm seeing it on my Thinkorswim. It is trade. It's L K N C Y. It is trading higher. It closed at 650, or no, it closed at 645, and it's trading at 823 right now. It is. Joel's got it. Yeah, okay, they do. They're, I can see actually. There it is, yeah. Because they, yeah. they do trade them. It's a, it cuts Amex, yeah. They do trade them. Let it be known. Day. Every single Chinese stock is trading. It's up 27%. I have the tickers going by, too. It's actively trading right yeah, now. Yeah, I got it up 31%. But yeah. uh, I don't wow. trade stuff often. Once it goes off exchange, yeah, it's, off my, it's, it's off my screener. It's off my board. I don't worry about it. And there's a lot of traders that trade that stuff. Not me. And there's a lot of traders that don't trade that stuff. And I'd say 90% of the investing public, once it goes off exchange, <laughs> is probably not interested in it. That's why delisting is such a concern. But all those concerns are still valid. And now we're just getting a rip your face off rally. So if you're heavy weighted, all these Chinese names, today's a great opportunity to lighten up. If you have none, today's not a great opportunity to buy. <laughs> Yesterday was a great opportunity I, to buy. I will so, say what, wait, one other, you're, you're, one you're, other Inevitably, thing. in this market, it gives you another chance. You know, think about Kathy Wood and how much everybody chased ARKK. Every time we bounce 15%, everybody's like, now is the time. Kramer does the piece. Remember the piece? Where now is the time to buy Kathy Wood stocks. And that was when ARKK went to 64 to 78. He top ticked it on that show. It never, ever got higher than what it was trading at right at the moment in time where he declared all those stocks buys. And now, obviously, you know, he doesn't say that. But and now it's at 56. I mean, again, you know, all the stocks are oversold. It wasn't the rally to fade yesterday. You could kind of feel that it wasn't going to be the fade because the PPI came out lighter. And that's what they're really concerned about is inflation. And, you know, so it was an excuse to buy oversold stocks yesterday. Now we get to follow through with China. 
We got the Fed meeting today. We got lots of headlines going to be coming. The Ukraine situation is still unknown, but there's potential for peace talks maybe over there. So right now they're they're uber positive here. But at the end of the day, still a lot of things exist here. I think if you got spy up, you know, near that 440, I think you're selling with two hands. So we're four. I want to go back to Baba here for a second, and then sure. and then we gotta we, we're gonna move on I'm here. Selling too. Um, I just it all depends, and I just wanted because I we have different terms of trade you know short term long term intermediate term whatever uh but like if i had like if i had taken a shot on like some 80 or 85 calls or something like that yesterday like the weeklies or something going two weeks out then i'd be hawking this price action because you're gonna get a lift here when it's up 16 bucks first you know it's already traded a lot four million it's already traded overseas so I'd be looking at, you know, getting through the pre-market high, and then I would just keep my eye on the daily highs. And uh, uh, I think the next daily high comes in at, uh, you know, 93.95. I, I would, would want it to go there. If it kept going, I'd want to go through 95.70. But if you, you know, I'd either, you know, take the profit in it. If you, This is if you have a short-term call. Like if you took a stab yesterday, let's say on the 85 calls when the thing closes at 77, there's going to be some juice in these things off the open. So I don't know if you want to look at like the, the next option out and maybe sell that, but I, I you know, that's and I, I'm not talking about shortening either. I'm just talking if you took a stab yesterday, the first time short-term options Watch where they're trading. Watch where they're trading the premium according to their strike. Because what, the 95 call, you know, that thing might be closed at probably 50 cents. I don't have my option train uh, with me. It probably closed at 50 cents. Might be five bucks right now. So that's that's the only thing I'd be looking at. You know, there's two days left in the week. Who knows what the three days left in the week. Yeah, just a short term. Short-term trading tip there. I'll bring the option it, platform I, up. I, I, this is a fun exercise. Talk, and I'll bring the option platform up. Okay. No, I'm this just – from the close. This is from the close. The option You know, because we're trading. talking about, well, we missed buying it yesterday, and we're not going to short it today, and I'm waiting for I don't a think there's a bag. trade today. I think oh, – I think – I'm scared to short it. I, I think the trade today is if you bought it yesterday, you sell it. But Well, yeah. Or I think you could get a shot up near 99, 98, 99 bucks. And then today? It's possible, Joel. It's just nah, not look where it just went. Yeah. It's very nah, there's possible. too many people that like ninety two. It's not that far away. You got a Fed day happening today. Yeah. The Baba calls, Joel, fantastic call. They were dirt cheap. So the calls for the week, this is why I don't know who writes these calls at this prices. But anyways, there was only two days, I guess, left. But you could have bought the ninety five Baba calls for twenty cents yesterday. <laughs> you could have bought I, the nineties for forty eight uh... cents. You could have bought the eighty fives for a buck fifteen. So Without, I'd say Capital 2020 is always a lottery ticket that wins the money. Right. Those lottery tickets expire worthless. That's what I was saying. It, this is like you just hit the, you know, you just hit the lotto. Right? And that's the other thing I'm saying. Okay. Somebody this, added, somebody I paid singer has Alibaba calls. Uh, I'm not going to steal his nice. thunder. I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'll let him talk about it. It'll be later on in the day, but somebody at Penzinga has Baba calls. Call. And the, the other thing I want to say, and then we'll move on here, but if you're like me and you're feeling the FOMO this morning, Listen to what Joel said before, and and I'm trying to take that to heart. If you want to buy this stuff, cool. Wait for a pullback. The convenient thing about a huge rip like this is you have a very easy out, right? Yesterday's close slash, you know, whatever the pre market o- open today, right? Easy, a- easy, like stop, like mental stop. Wait for a pullback, right? Don't buy these things up 20, 30, 40 percent this morning. It usually Wait. doesn't work. Some nothing works 100 percent of the time though, so maybe it's going to be the day that's just going to rip another 20. Maybe we go that to 110. Yeah, maybe I'm yeah. totally wrong. Maybe and, it goes and, to 110. And, that's why I'm not shorting okay. the stock. Okay, so I'm not buying. I never. I don't make much money buying a stock up 21. percent Not yeah. maybe in 2020 we were making money doing that. The hot, the strong got stronger. This is not 2020 anymore. 2022 and fade the rip, sell the rip. People still don't like to hear this, but sell the rip. Has worked better. Sell the rip in 2022 has worked better than buy the dip in 2020. And that's the truth. I mean, every freaking rip, it seems like it's sold. So, I mean, upstart. Think about Kramer up there touting it. You know, when we went from 110 to 150, these are the stocks you got to own. And he's up there, you know, prancing around how good upstart quarter is and it's going to continue to go higher. He still has 2020 goggles on. 
because it's 150, and here it is eight sessions later, and it's 97 uh, 101 this morning. They give it back, man. So, I mean, there's a lot of bag holders still in here. This is a very good headline, but I would, if I, you don't want to flip a coin, I think 75% of the time, I don't know if that makes any sense, that it's probably going to start fading off of this because there's a lot of bag holders. Uh, all right, let's move on here. Uh, I had next to talk about the Fed. There's really not much, I think, to say about it other than we know what they're going to do. They're going to raise rates by a quarter point. Uh, the question mark is, what do they say? What kind of guidance do they give beyond that? Um, as guidance as far as future rate hikes, guidance as far as where they see inflation or how long they see it lasting. Uh, that's probably the biggest question mark here. Even so, though, I couldn't tell you how the market will react. I have no idea. Um, but 2, two o'clock Eastern time today is when the statement comes out. 2.30 is the press conference. We're going to be streaming it. But do you guys have anything to say about about today? I mean, it, it, I, it is kind of it is going to be the biggest market event of the month, of the yeah. quarter, maybe even of the year, frankly. Um, this will be our first rate hike in three year, uh, uh, three and a half years. So it is very notable today. I think you're going to see a lot of shop. And again, my levels, and I'll go to levels here. I love that 440 for a nice sale on SPY. So if we really get silly town, and all trading is is setting up scenarios. But if we go into silly town where, you know, off the algos, you know, and they rip it higher for whatever reason, 439, 440 would be a fantastic area to lighten up stocks. Um, you know, on a pullback here, 431, we start pulling back. You get down near yesterday's low of 420 if we really got <laughs> ugly. Just setting up scenario analysis. Yeah. Not making yep, a call because know, somebody will say, oh, Dennis said we were going to 420. No, I set up two scenarios. <laughs> I'd be a seller at 440 and probably a buyer at 420, which is 100 points up from here and 100 points down from here because it's going to be a wild, crazy session. That's where I'll be actually trying to put on shorts probably is up near the 439, 440 area. And if I was buying the pullbacks, it'd probably be in the lower 420. In 431 area, I'm not doing a hell of a lot besides just you know typical day trading. Okay. That's uh, I think all thoughts. Good you want to uh, go with this? Yeah, I'm trying to. I wish I could do better with these lines, but this and I don't do this very often. Come on, I like man. it when you draw lines. Okay. Draw what a, I mean, I, I. I mean, look at this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I like this. I like where you're going with this. Yeah. I like where he's going with this. Come on. Why can't I do it, man? I just want to. This is what I'm trying to do. Go, go connect all those dots from the original one. I like what you, where you were going. Go, go I, stop there and go up to the other spot. I know. Go up I'm to like trying. the 480. Right. Don't, don't. Oh, up here? Yeah, go way oh. up there. Do that trend. Keep, keep going. Keep going all the way up to the 480. I like where you're going here. Ooh, there you go. go. Ooh, I like that too. Oh. That's a hedge, right? That's yeah. A Ooh, there you look go. At that. You can start getting above those lines and start looking bullish. Look, that's a, 20, that 20, is a nice space, wedgie yeah. there. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, look at a nice wedgie. <laughs> Yeah, I like that wedgie. <laughs> look at that. I mean, look at that. We're gonna wind our way into this here, and then I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, a few times, you know, I know you flip, you flop. But, you know, I get really yeah. down, really yeah. bearish. Yeah. You know, I have tried to say that this, this, that forty ninety four and a quarter, you know, could be the new twenty two hundred. I, you know. And it hasn't been breached. It was almost breached last night. or Let's see, not last night, but two nights ago. I don't know. End of war. China being nice. It's just like, oh, too much good news for once. Can't they just kind of like space out the good news so we can just digest it a no, little bit do more? Like no, it has to be all good news. Or it has to be all bad, bad news. But one thing I did notice yesterday, and, you know, the headlines move stuff, right? But. Sometimes you got to look at how the market reacts to the headline. And we were up near the highs. This is like around noon. And Putin came out and said that. I like it when you say Putin instead of Putin. I like What's Putin his name? better. Putin? Who cares? Putin. Putin. I like Putin better. I like puking. Putin. How, how, Putin. 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 I think it's Putin. Poopin? Poopin. Poopin? Putin. Poopin? No. We're going to get oh. cut off here by Russian television, so you better stop talking. <laughs> yeah, well, Chinese the Chinese made enough money off us yesterday, so they're going to keep us on. Uh, <laughs> let me finish my thought. And then, oh, then he came out around noon and said, Ukraine doesn't want to negotiate fairly. And they hit, they hit the market. 
I mean, there was a big hit, and I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a bad headline. Is that going to be a turn? And I can tell you, look, right around noon here, it had, uh, boom, where's noon? This is, like, that's 18. It's really not showing much up on the hourly because it bounced right back. Uh, but it was, a, it was a negative headline, and the market sold off, but it just shrugged it off. It was like, okay, boom, yeah, whatever. We don't believe them, and it came right back. So... Is the market getting numb to some of these headlines? Maybe, but I, that was my first indication because that of, of something negative, the market took it in, digested it, and then rallied off it. Yeah. Can we I let's do our second stock of the day? All right, Starbucks. Let's go. Let's go Starbucks. There are certain executives. Starbucks. There are certain executives. Yeah. That, that Wall Street loves. One of them is Howard Schultz. Starbucks out with the PR today that their CEO Kevin Johnson is retiring. And Howard Schultz, the former CEO who retired, is jumping back into the fray as interim CEO. Oh, my gosh. Schultz is back? Schultz no, only for back. five months. Temporarily. Schultz is back. Um, I mean, temporarily, Spencer. That, I said interim. He That's is right. loved. Schultz is loved. I, I, I think I read that book on him. Wasn't there a book on him way back in the day? Howard Schultz? Anyways, he, he's loved. He's loved. So... This- Joe, can you take your purple Jeff Mackey purple crayon and give us a line? Forget about the top of one fifteen, but like start at the like maybe in February and connect all those lines oh, there. Okay. Bring it up to like ninety ninety one. I think that's where you're selling. I think ninety. I like the ninety level. I mean, I think, you... I think again, looking to sell rallies here, not buying rallies. I'd I'd be a seller around ninety. I uh, think you got room tonight. I, I don't I don't feel it. I I just can't draw a line just at, at the whim of you wanting me to draw a line. I. <laughs> You're on the wrong shirt, first of all. It's on the top right. But I didn't, I didn't tell you that part. So that was. Yeah, you didn't bit, tell me. A little bit my uh, fault. A couple things here. First of all, um, the eyeball test on this one is just worked. This is, I drive by a couple different I love Starbucks. that line. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. so one. do all the bulls. The hell with this line. <laughs> um, the, the line that just goes. It's hard to do. I don't know if it's because my, we'll laptop, do a new technical my laptop. I just need, you know what I need? I need Oculus goggles and contact my computer and say, draw a trend line from this high to here. And it would work. Todd Gordon is going to show me how to do that. Todd Gordon is uh, with the lines, man. But uh, just the eyeball test. In this area, since the pandemic, you go by these Starbucks and they're always closed. They're closed. There's one on Telegraph and Maple. I mean, I don't even know when it's not open on set. I mean, they can't. Every time I go by a Starbucks, it's open. So I don't know what. No, Spencer, could you back me up on this? There are a handful in our area that seem to have not reopened. This is true. Or they reopen, but they have very limited hours. Yes, this is true. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it just—I don't know what Schultz is going to do. I mean, now this one open the stores. I would, I would. He needs to go in there and be a barista, is what he needs because they don't have baristas. Well, he might do that. Schultz and they're is unionizing. Crazy enough, he's crazy enough to do that, man. This one, if I was going to fade a rally, this would be the one I would fade. Uh, as opposed to the Alibaba, ninety eighty six. I mean, I fun, all the all the you, there's fundamentals wrong with this. They're like the unions, the higher wages, inflation. Well, how's coffee doing? Has coffee been ripping? I mean, input cost. I mean, everything. Where I think Schultz. I, I, I've back. noticed that Starbucks doesn't typically trade with coffee. I think because they lock in their prices so far. In yeah, the year that that there's not a strong correlation. I'm there. with you, Joel. I'd be a seller at 90, but, but two bucks higher. Okay. So, All right. I'll, I'm, I'll with give you. You. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Okay. We're on the Pre-market. same side of everything here. We're buying the this pullback in Baba when it pulls back 20% from the 20% rally today. <laughs> <laughs> and we're selling Starbucks. Way. Next, me and Joel are together. Team. Keep an eye on this high right here. I'm going to give you a level. 88.81. Yeah, you're above it now or below it now. Keep an eye on 88.81. See if it can test the pre-market eye. All right, let's bring on today's guest, Christian Fomhurst from Tribeca Trade Group, who will hopefully bring some sanity to the show. I mean, oh, wait, I didn't even realize that retail sales come out for February. Um, ah, I really picked off here. You're supposed to tell me that. Sorry. Actually, I didn't. But. All right, Christian, good morning, man. How are we doing? Good morning, guys. How's it going? Uh, it's going. We're all in a good mood for the first time. This is the first time in weeks that the three of us are in a good mood. I, rah, I, don't, rah, know, China. I don't know what that says about 
the market right now, and if that's a sell signal or what. But uh, well, congrats on getting long uh, China names. Oh yesterday. yeah, we Great all job. bought yesterday. Did, didn't get the memo. We all <laughs> bought. China, we all bought Alibaba yesterday, right at the lows, because that's what you do. You buy the lows. <laughs> <laughs> you buy the dip, right? That's yeah. worked so well this year. Oh yeah, it's worked excellent. So of course we're all long Alibaba, and we're all partying. Well, I, I think what you said yesterday, uh, I believe uh, this is what you said yesterday, was that it, you know, these things are due for a bounce. Anything could bounce in a downtrend. And, th you know, the other thing to look at, too, is the I think there was a three day stretch last week. And by the way, in the Chinese Internet ETF, we're just back to where we were last week. Yeah, because <laughs> this this was down 30 percent in three days. Yeah. So in three days, it was down 30 percent. So. Uh, you know, a lot of volatility there. And, um, you know, it, I do think that it's interesting that that China finally uh, blinked, which I think people just, you know, thought for a while, you know, watching what the China Internet ETF was doing over the last year. And they just said, hey, at some point, they're going to stop these crackdowns on, you know, on, on basically what what they're doing, which has kind of led to the led to the situation of the of the problem. But it's they just haven't. So finally, um, you know, I guess they, they said something that kind of changed the tone a little bit. And and at this point, yeah, like, a, you know, a change in the wind could could possibly cause these things to go up, which is what just you have to so do. oversold. Yeah. And I mean, you can take it not from China, but all the Kathy names. I mean, everything is just epically oversold here. So we're due for a bounce, like, I mean, in, yeah. in a lot of things. And now we're getting that bounce here this morning. So what do you do now? I mean, you're long these Chinese stocks, or maybe you're not long, maybe you're short, or maybe you don't have no position at all. Is there a trade here in Alibaba today, or is it just too much, too fast? What are your thoughts here on even, like, a stock like Alibaba? I, I think exactly what you said. I, I think you want to be, you know, if you happen to kind of buy this dip, you know, whether it was yesterday or maybe the day before, you probably want to be ringing the register i think it's more important to kind of it listen it's too it's too difficult to figure out these names because you know like we've seen over the last year you just don't know what china is going to do and the u.s market is is you know is difficult to, enough you don't have to add another layer of another, difficulty there's a good point to figure out like what what you know china is going to do or you know it's the same thing too like you know there was inflows going into the into the russia etf you know before that got halted too so these markets i get it there's there's a you know people see these things down that much and they're like oh geez you know it's a, it's out of discount and so forth but I think you could turn right over to the to the and look at the U.S. markets and and you know possibly try to kind of think about you know all the headlines that are going on because this has been a headline market now for a while. Yeah. But yeah. you look at where the S and P is this year, and I think we're down. We're still down ten percent for the year. The Qs are down. I think about seventeen percent year to date. So I'm really starting to. I've tried to be as patient as possible. Like you know since the beginning since the first month of the year was over where we kind of established ourselves in a downtrend but i'm really starting to kind of say okay let's start to look at the risk reward uh for the u.s market and you know think about how this situation could resolve itself with ukraine and russia and you know you know we we don't know obviously but you know it's starting to kind of i think that the risk reward is starting to kind of tilt a little bit more towards hey this is starting to get a to be a, an opportunity because the reality is just like this happened overnight with china you're you're not really going to get much of a heads up i think with this market it's it's going to be if there's some type of peace talks which i think we hope just in the in the you know the greater scheme of things for sure that this market is is going to most likely fly on that you know to to the upside to what percentage point i i don't know exactly but you have to think about your event risk um at this point uh that that we've got in the market so that that's what i'm kind of thinking about um you know i was i was thinking about that uh yesterday and, and a little bit today and of course you know this it doesn't <laughs> it's not like we have a simple market we've got the fed meeting today so I think everybody is really interested to see what Powell says about, you know, what what Powell are we going to get today? Is it going to be the one that we saw with the last Fed meeting, which was really shaky and didn't have a lot of confidence? Or was it going to be the Powell that we saw a week or two ago when he testified in front of Congress? And it was much more, you know, had a much more solid footing, I thought. And the market seemed to like it better, too.
How do you We're on the line with Christian Fromberg, a Trebekah Trade Group. Uh, a great, a great follow on Twitter. Um, and and don't always agree with everything that you tweet or everything that you like. But what? But come on, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. We, we'll we'll go order that. So we'll go order that off air. Uh, but uh, but what I from from your your Twitter feed and from your tweets and everything, I you know you're like one of the people besides the news that you know you really interpret things. You know from a, a geopolitical like I you're you're on top of things. You're, thank you. Thank and, you. And and you know. Is this, and maybe this is a stretch here, but is this like this China, you know, niceness here? Is this just kind of maybe just a result of what what Russia's doing? I mean, it's like wow, things, you know, like this wasn't in their playbook, right? Right. right. And they really don't want to side with the United States. They really don't want, you know, they want to try and stay neutral. Um, you know, we what their long term goals are and everything. Are you know are their long term goals? But I mean, to me. I think just, you know, yeah, they had their tech crackdown. Yeah, they want to, you know, increase their, their position in the world. But like this, this Russia thing, this is like, is this just something where they said, whoa, you know, let's just take a second here. And because this is kind of a, a pro, in my opinion, kind of a pro US stance here. They're not supporting, you know, who knows what they're doing militarily. Is that just a big positive stretch on my part? Or do you see any uh, credibility in that? I mean, it's, you know, I think that you could kind of look at some of these things from from both sides. I mean, the other thing, too, which which is kind of crazy to me is, you know, COVID is back there, too. So, uh, you know, what kind of stance are they going to take with that, too? So there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of different ways that you that you could look at this. Um, and what I try to do is, you know, when you have this many headlines and this many views, because I, I, I think that's definitely a, a possibility, Joel, is that, you know, maybe they're kind of changing their stance a little bit, but we don't know. You know, we, we you know, it could be one headline one day and one headline another. For sure. What, what I try to really do is I, I do kind of, you know, really pay attention to price and trend and what it's telling me. And then a couple indicators, you know, one of the things that I thought that was really interesting that I don't think got a lot of attention last week was that, you know, while the S and P had a down week and a pretty decent down week last week, the VIX was actually down last week, right? So you, so for the week, and there was a couple of days last week where you had a bullish divergence while the market was going down, the VIX was not going higher. So I kind of, try to take some of those hints away from you know the market and say huh that's a little bit different than what we've seen over the last two three months you know we've been seeing this vix go higher and it stayed stubborn around like you know the the 30 range 30 to 35 range but i find that kind of interesting that the vix went down last week with all of these headlines going on uh, with the s p so i i think you know that's one of the things that has me more interested in this market uh just to say hey that that's something a little bit different and now we need to see like the price action in some of these indices get a little bit better uh you know so i would like to see us at first you know the s p which has been stalled at the 20-day moving average just to at least get above the 20-day moving average to say hey maybe this trend is starting to kind of reverse a little bit and if that doesn't happen you know then you can kind of continue to be defensive which i think a lot of traders are being right now just want to get your comments on uh, on the VIX. Now I know there's different uh, indicators that track it, but uh, <laughs> what about uh, you know Barclays pulling the plug on the uh, on the VXX? Uh, you know, so that I mean, what are you using now to to track the VIX? Because that's I mean that thing went to f- over forty yesterday with no no more reduction. Dennis, I didn't even get your comments on that too, uh, from a market structure standpoint. I mean, yeah, go ahead, De- Dennis. You want to talk? For- I think no, it's it's, it's, your, it's your spot, Christian. We'll let you go first. He doesn't want to comment on the VXX. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I don't know what to say about it. So it just seems like uh, you know we've how many things have we seen that's kind of that has really gone awry? Like we just saw you know this nickel market you know implode as well. So it at this point. Like it doesn't surprise me that something like this would happen, but I'll tell you this: the product VXX itself, I really don't know why anybody had that on their screen to begin with, because over time it has done a horrific job. And and same thing with all these ETNs. Like yeah. I don't know who who told retail traders to put these things on your screen. There you go, amen. Be- 
because they it it does a ridiculous job at at tracking that, and that's the same thing for anything that has that is like a derivative of a derivative, right? There's going to be a lot of slippage, but all you have to do is look at the the long term chart of VXX and look at it with v, with the VIX the money and to loser. realize like the VIX is hard enough to understand. You're putting now you're taking something that is not the VIX and you're and you're trying to make a product, but it's it's one of those things as a retail investor you should always look to see what exactly the product is just because they call it short term VIX futures product. Look to see what it is, like understand what the product is, and then take a look at the price. And it's the same thing with like you could look at USO versus oil futures, right? There's big slippage there, so. Just because they they slap you know a, a name on a product, it doesn't mean it's a good product, and it you know it should be investigated on whether or not you should be taking a position in it. And if it doesn't line up, like the VXX hasn't worked for years, you know, then just remove it from your screen. There's you know it's better just to look at the VIX itself. There's just you know so many of these products that are created for day traders. And then the long-term investor ends up investing in these products and they're not investable products. They're trading vehicles. You know, we've talked about the triple levered funds all the time, you know, and everybody thinks, oh, if the spy is up 30% this year and I buy the triple levered fund, I'm going to be up hundred percent or 90% this year. And right. It doesn't work like that because of the rebalancing, the daily rebalancing sucks some of that away all the time. Right. So, and, and it, that's it's, fine if the market trends. If you get a choppy market yes, with any of these levered products, your your returns get will they will greatly diminish in terms of what the underlying index is doing. So it works great when you've got a trending market. Yes. You won't see the slippage as much, but when you've got a market like you have this year, where it's up two percent, down two percent, up one and a half, yes. up what you know, down your the those products will really um, underperform in terms of when you when you account for that leverage. I don't think they could have said it better themselves, honestly, because uh, th I think they would tell you these are trading instruments, not, not exactly. Well, if you read the prospectus on a lot of these vehicles, it's like and you, and, you, and you dig down in the details, it's exactly what Christian just said. You know, it's yeah. in the prospectus on a lot of these things. Yeah. But People and don't I, stop. I know that's them. what you guys are doing on your weekends. You're reading these perspectives. <laughs> Page 78 of the prospectus <laughs> on the DXX product here. Right, that, right. There's maybe a tracking error if we. <laughs> yeah. Also, we, we reserve the right to halt creations at any point, in which case anything can happen. Uh, all right, Christian, um, anything else that's on your radar here outside of the Fed, any specific sector or industry or group of stocks on a watch right now that, that, that you're paying close attention to or just just the usual yeah i mean a, a couple names like I'm, I'm watching like a palo alto um you know i i think that had good earnings and and um you know another name that reports this week is accenture um accenture has reported uh, the last 10 quarters they've gone up nine out of the last 10 quarters so that's a name like so you start to kind of watch for things that hopefully will start to make sense a little bit more you know like so for example if accenture goes down right after earnings then i then it kind of tells me that we may not be out of the woods especially in terms of growth tech but if you start to see like a, a positive report there where it's a little bit more like the norm where you know that company has been very consistent on earnings then i could say okay the market's making a little bit more sense to me but if they come out with a pretty good report pretty good guidance and and the stock falls it's like okay we'll try to just continue to sit on my hands a little bit more but i'm you know looking for those kind of green shoots in this Cows. market to yep. say hey uh, you know i want to see these things um you know act a little bit more rational what about fedex tomorrow night FedEx, uh, I think that'll be a good one to, to watch too. Remember when when UPS reported, like you know, a, a couple months ago, and they had a really good report and they fell. So I, I think FedEx will be one one to to watch. Um, but FedEx is a tougher name to trade, I think. Mm. All right, Christian Fromhertz runs the Tribeca Trade Group. A uh, link to that and to his Twitter are both on the are both in the description. Uh, Christian, always a pleasure, man. Have fun today watching uh, Uncle Jay, and uh, <laughs> we'll be in touch. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Thanks, All right. Christian. All right, it is eight fifty. We got ten minutes left in today's show, so let's do some ticker time. Whatever you have for us, drop your tickers in the chat. We will do our best to cover as many of them as we can in the next nine and a half minutes 
give or take. Do you want to do any Biogen or Spotify or anything like that? Oh, we, 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 we can do Biogen. Let's start with Biogen. They had some positive news on their Alzheimer's drug, uh, Aduhelm, which I haven't heard about for a hot second here. They announced a long-term phase three data from Aduhelm shows that it, it does continue to reduce the underlying pathologies of Alzheimer's disease uh, in patients that, that get the drug for more than two years. So uh, not the end of a trial here, but just positive data out of a trial. Uh, Biogen up, um, what, 10 bucks? Not, not even. Not it's anymore. giving it most of it back. Yeah, it's not even that much more in the yeah. market. It's only up four now. So You know what? I think it's the price of that drug. It's still spooking people, right? I think it's just Maybe. the fact that they temporarily approved something and the market, you know, rallied the stock to four hundred and seventy five dollars and now every time it gets we're 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 now numb to the headline. People don't care about the headline, you know, where before it was Alzheimer's drugs like, whoa, we're kinda of numb to it now. We had the huge move off of it and even when you get a little bit of positive data from it, it's not like everybody's like, Okay, yeah, but now so what? I mean, they hate the stock. I own the stock. They hate the stock. It, it's like we already talked about it. It's trading with a P like 10 or 11 or whatever it is. I mean, there's a number of stocks that have just been thrown out that they just don't like. And Biogen's one of them. I don't know what turns the narrative towards Biogen around. Okay. I don't know either. Let's go to the chat. Let's go uh, Let's go for Leonardo Chen. Let's go to Ford. What's Ford? Ford. Six Fords. Feet. Fords. Fords, as they say in Michigan. Still long. Oh, I don't know what to do with this. Bought it seven bucks, sold half of it at twenty. Wish I would have sold it all. Sixteen thirty eight. I don't know what to say. I don't even know. I mean, you've got a major issue here. Gas prices are not coming down very quickly. If oil collapses, maybe we'll start to see them come down, but I don't know if oil is going to collapse here, and that makes people turned off of buying a new car. So yes, electric is coming. But they're a little ways away from converting all their combustible engines to electric engines. So in the meantime, they're still gas guzzling Fords. I mean, my Ford pickup, I fill it up and it's two hundred and twenty bucks or something Canadian. Really? Right now. Yeah, Canadian. So it's like hundred bucks. No, it's hundred. We know the exchange rate joke, but I mean, it's over two hundred dollars to fill my F one fifty. So that is like, uh, you know, I love my F one fifty. But I'm not driving. And would I go out and be buying a $90,000 pickup right now? Because that's what they are, you know, to go and, you know, probably not. That's... So they're a, a direct victim of higher gas prices. And that's something we weren't talking about at the end of December because gas wasn't exploding and oil prices weren't exploding. They were going up a little bit, but it wasn't exploding higher. So that's the concern with buying Ford and GM right now. And even though I own them both is they're a long ways away from being an electric car company. Uh, I would just say it's trying to put a bottom in here. I mean, it got hit after earnings, and then it never really could recover. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of a, a potential like big boy bottom, you know, where you multiple days. Uh, looks like they're targeting this 15 and a half to $16 area. So uh, here you only had two lows in the same area, and then the, the earnings hit it. But here... I, one, two, three, four, five lows. So it feels like you're building a little bit of a base here uh, to make a rally. Shorter term, where are we trading at? We're trading just above the highs in the last two sessions. So if it, you know, if it holds sixteen ten, maybe take a shot at sixteen fifty. Uh, but the real, sh real, su real support is at the uh, fifteen fifty, fifteen six. Could be a major bottom. Too early to tell. What what about Lockheed Martin here? This is interesting because it's I see it down. Uh, well, the twenty uh, fifteen. You need programmers. You don't need you don't need big old airplanes. Uh, it broke four forty. That was big support. So no. if you're looking for a bounce here, I use four forty as resistance. There's just a lot of room here on the downside, folks. One measly low at four twenty nine twenty eight, and then you're looking at the lower four hundreds, four thirteen fifty is your next daily low. All right. Uh, what about? I'm looking for names where the charts don't all look identical. They all pretty much look identical. That's no. you know when you're in a bear market. Okay, Walmart. Walmart. Walmart announced they're hiring or they aim to hire fifty thousand new employees in the next month and a half. Defensive what? stock. What? Yep. Fifty thousand. Wow. 
Yeah, well, you know how many people work at Walmart, Joel? It's I don't like know. Them. You know, millions and millions. How many employees does Walmart have? Uh, it's one. I think it might be millions. It might hundreds be the, and hundreds Walmart, of thousands. Walmart might be the largest employer in America. Walmart, maybe Amazon. There might even be a million people work there. Maybe Amazon is now, but Walmart's close. Are they opening? Hey Siri, hey Siri, how many people work at Walmart? <laughs> Two, two million. million people. They employ 2.3 million people. They employ almost 1% of the U.S. population. <laughs> this segment That's was incredible. brought to you Siri, by Apple. Said, there's an ad for Microsoft, right? There, or for Apple, I guess. Siri. <laughs> I didn't see Siri on the guest list today, Dennis. Yeah, Siri made, a, made an appearance. 2.3 million people. I was right, millions and millions of people. And I was like, maybe it's not millions. No, it is. 2.3 million people. <laughs> My girls, it, my girls and Lisa, they they think that um, I talk to Siri too much, because like they ask me something and I'm just like just ask Siri and Siri Siri knows wow. the answer. Oh, I know. It's, wait, 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 wait. You know when you're like a, a, a dad and you're like your, your your kid when they're really young or whatever. You know, obviously you can just ask a question and then you're like you can just BS the answer. And then they're like, well, I don't know if I believe that. And Spencer's seven now, and then he can just he'll he'll just yell at my phone, Hey Siri. I'm like, Dad, you were wrong. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it, Siri we, need everything. we need a correction. The 2.3 million number is worldwide. Yeah. It's, 1. I do it. it's okay. 1.6 million in the U.S. Anyway, back to the chart. A lot of people. Back to the wow. Chart. I don't know. It's defensive that- stock. It's been going up because we're playing defense. Walmart is defensive. And it's in that defensive bucket. It's been going up. It's actually down today because we're not, we're risk on. So risk, Walmart right now is a risk off stock. So throw it in the bucket with your risk off stocks because it's risk off. We're risk on today. That's why Walmart is trading in the red. I got a great level for you guys. I like Delta great levels. Okay. This is this whole area above uh, 146. Look at that. Pair highs, 146 and a half. A little bit lower, just above 146. Here, just above 146. Here, what did you hit yesterday? 46.15. So it, it proves to me that it, it can bust through the 146 how, sellers. I mean, I'm I'd even be skeptical up to 146 and a half, especially after look look at the this rally. I mean, 14 point rally and a, a kind of a mixed tape. It's been a better tape the last couple of days ago. I'd be darn sure this thing goes 146, 146 and a half real soon. Or uh, looks uh, I'll look for a little bit of a pullback. That's what I got in Walmart. All right, Human asked for Lowe's, L-O-W, which is trading up this morning just a little bit. How is L-O-W? It's, it's up a few bucks. It's this fun. lower beta, so boring stock. It's This is tough market to call anything in right now. Right now, they got Lowe's in a little bit more defensive bucket here, too. I'm going to say it. Um, you know, because it's not, you know, they, they've been hammering. They've been put tech with Chinese tech. I mean, Lowe's, they've got it kind of in that somewhat defensive bucket. So... Chart sets up okay. I mean, you're 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 trying to break the downtrend here, but I don't know if I'm buying anything today, man. I own I own those. I've owned it. I don't know for since 2014, 2015, oh, you're something a long-term like that. Warren Buffett holder. Um, nice. and what did you have? Is this quite a sixty point move? Uh, sixty three down. To, uh, yeah, let's call it sixty. Let's just call it make it easy. Uh, getting back half of this move, three, 232, 233, getting back up that area. Hold that. Next target, monthly target would be uh, 240.71. What I do like about this chart is just on a, like a relative strength basis, look where your, Jan- uh, your February low was at uh, 206.24. You haven't even come close to that in March. And just look at what the market's done, the ebb and flowed. So, Relative strength basis holding up well. No plans to uh, to be selling it anytime soon. All right. That is a wrap for the show today. Just checking on uh, all my Chinese stocks that I don't own. And uh, they're all still doing amazing. Quick update. We got uh, Zelensky to address uh, Congress here at yeah. uh, 9 a.m. So you could get some movement. And guess who's covering that uh, for Reuters? Emily. Yes, oh, Emily's nice, in Washington. Joel. Yep, sweet. yeah, she is. She's in Washington covering it. So, all right, I'm gonna hop over to Pre Market Prep Plus, and uh, I don't know if any of you apes are listening, but uh, we're gonna have the Wedbush analyst on talking about uh, which one? Who you having? Alicia Reese, and you know who she worked under? No, Michael Pactor. Ooh, yeah. 
Yeah. Nice. So I opened it up. You guys can find it in our uh, Wedbush tweet there. Apes, come and join us and uh, give us a hard time. We welcome uh, all apes. All right. Talk to you guys later on. Uh, Dennis, I'm going to call you at 10, okay? Sure. Bye. Funny how that how that changes. We welcome all apes. We w- I feel like we weren't always welcome to all apes. But- We're welcome to everyone. All right. Whatever. Apes, redditors. Bulls, bears, whatever. Everyone. All right, uh, we're we're, we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, don't forget to, before you go to smash that like button. Uh, I I hate saying it. It's I feel dumb saying it, but it really does help us in the eyes of YouTube or wherever you're watching the show, Twitch, Facebook, even on LinkedIn. Uh, just hit the thumbs up, and that that helps us in the eyes of the mysterious algorithm. Thanks to our guest, Christian Fonmer. Thanks to all of you in our chat. You want to become a member of Benzinga's YouTube? Click that join button on our YouTube page. Get access to exclusive emojis and badges and more to come. Check out Benzinga Pro, pro pro.benzinga.com, free two-week trial for all. And go to bzcannabis.com to sign up for the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference. Get 30% off your ticket with the code that's on the screen, SHOWS30, SHOWS30. I'm going to head over to live trading with Benzinga myself, Ryan Zunade, Aaron Bree, doing the show today. we got a lot to get to. We'll do a lot more stocks from the chat. So, we're going to end the stream, redirect to those guys, and uh, I'll see you over there.